morning. Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, a webcast, an online show, um, whatever you want to call us. We are online, um, live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, and the show is free and open to anyone to watch on Wednesday mornings, as are our recordings, which are available um, on our website. So you can go there and watch them as well for free, anyone who wants to. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, anything that is library related, basically, we are happy to have it on the show. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff doing commission related um, programs and services, but we also bring in guest speakers, as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us is um, Marty McGee. She's up in Omaha this morning, uh, remoting in with us. She is from the University of Nebraska's uh, Medical Center's McGugan Library of Medicine. And how, good morning, Marty. Good morning, Krista. Thanks morning. for having me. Yeah, and she's been on the show quite a few times before talking about any all sorts of different things uh, medical resources related. And um, this is a presentation that she did actually at our um, state conference last fall. Um, she followed me. I did a presentation, then she walked in the room and did hers following up. So we um, got together and got her to come on and share it with us on the show as well. So uh, 13 things you may not know about National Library of Medicine resources. So I will just hand it over to you, Marty, to go ahead and take it away. Okay. Thanks so much, Krista. Well, it's my pleasure to be here today. Um, uh, I have, in the past, worked for the National Library of Medicine under the National Network Libraries of Medicine and have been the Nebraska liaison. liaison. And I have recently just moved on to another position here at the McGugan Library of Medicine. But I actually can't resist the opportunity to do a presentation about National Library of Medicine resources because I think they're such a wonderful place to go. Um, because they're free, anybody can get to them. And there's just loads of resources there. And uh, not long ago, I ran onto a page that I hadn't seen before. And um, I'm going to show you that page, I hope. There we go. No, it's not going there. Let's try here. OK, now we're not advancing correctly. Yeah, is that your, your PowerPoint's not doing there. anything? OK. Yeah, it's not. Hold on. Yeah, because we're still seeing the first slide. Yeah, there. Okay. There you go. Yep. Now, I can... now it's on. Now okay. it's on. Yep. So I came across this page, which is really referencing consumer health questions. And it had loads of connections to different resources. And they're not all National Library of Medicine resources. But many of them are government resources. And they have been looked at and reviewed by medical librarians so you can rest assured that you'll be getting to a good place. So on each one of the slides that I've included here, I've usually got a little yellow box that gives you the URL. And at the end of the session, I'll show you where you can get the PowerPoint. And I think Krista will also be putting that up, too. Um, yes. But we're going to be covering some of the selected resources from this page. So you should be seeing some body pictures now. Yep. Correct? Yep. It's working fine now. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we've got your slides, okay, and we good. do, just remember, we do, and if you can't, we do see your little, at least I don't mind, your little webcam over there on the side with your face that's just coming through from GoToWebinar. Oh, let me close that off. I know that can be a little distracting. Is that better? No, it's something with GoToWebinar is, is detecting your webcam and sharing it through in the GoToWebinar software. Okay. Um, there should be. A, well, I hope it won't be distracting. No, some people like that. It's not a problem. Just so you know that you are on the screen to people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be careful yeah. about what I do. <laughs> <We're looking. laughs> so A is for, and you can type this in the chat box, or perhaps, Krista, you might be my surrogate uh, audience today. Mm -hmm. What would you put in those? This is just to keep you a little bit engaged in the presentation. Oh, what could, uh, arteries? I don't no. know. Think about what all <laughs> these things represent. Oh, their part. anatomy. Anatomy. Excellent. Yep, somebody's saying, oh. people are saying anatomy in the questions, yes. Okay, that's good. So this, yeah, so you guys so, know this uh, is going to be a little bit interactive. Uh, Marty's going to be asking you for some things, some input, so keep your question section open. <laughs> and why am I not seeing my questions? Um, I just see it on my side. I'll pass it through to you. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. No problem. Um, 
So yes, for anatomy. So there are some places that you can go. I particularly like Medline Plus, and I'll be mentioning Medline Plus because it's one of our primary consumer health resources. It has several different uh, areas that you can go, but this particular one on the left side, um, if you go to any of these parts on the website, and then let's say you were scrolling over this body, uh, the site will highlight the items that you are uh, looking at, and it will give you the names of those items. So it's, a, again, a very interactive way to use something. If you're working with children particularly, it's a nice way to be able to show them different parts of their body. But this goes into much more depth. If you go into the Medline Plus, it will lead you to other resources. Um, a couple of other things are the visible human. And if you don't know about this, this is a fascinating uh, program that they started many years ago. And they had a man from uh, a prison who had volunteered to, ha to dedicate his body to be the visible man. And what they basically did was freeze his body and then uh, imagine that he were standing up and then you would be slicing that body into little tiny one millimeter slices. Uh, so you can actually go into this visible human and you could look at those slices or you can actually look at a movie of the, the whole, all the slices, which you know, just takes you maybe a minute to get through as it layers on top. Um, and then a few years after that, they did a, a visible female of a woman who was a housewife and um, decided to also dedicate her body to this uh, particular study. So it's a really interesting one if you're uh, interested in pursuing that. Another one that I like is History of Medicine Images. Um, the National Library of Medicine has a vast collection on the history of medicine. And I think sometimes we forget the resources there that are now available because they're being digitized that we can go look at. So if you want to provide some perspective on how things used to look or how people used to think they looked and how they look now, uh, when you go into anatomy, this might be an interesting place for you to check out. Okay, now, <laughs> and we're still not advancing. Well, this has been the trickiest thing here today. Sorry. Let's try another one. No? Nope. It worked before, yeah. I wonder if it's the presentation view that you're in, if that's causing some confusion to here, something. Here, how about that? Is that now it is, yep. You're on. Okay, let's try this. Oh, yep. Okay. So when I first looked at this, I thought it was pronounced Agricola, so that's why I have a cola thing there, but it's really pronounced Agricola. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the catalog name for what's at the U United States Department of Agriculture. So there are multiple resources there. Again, you can see some of the topics that they have, animals and livestock, education, outreach, food, and human nutrition is particularly big on that one. So I think that's a really nice resource. They also have protocols there. So if you happen to work for a medical uh, institution and you're doing uh, uh, trials basically on animals, it will give you the protocols for handling that information. I know we've just had one of our librarians here at McGugan actually go to the Department of Agriculture and take the training on that. So uh, we also have provided some uh, resources for that on our McGugan Library of website here at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And then I also wanted to mention the Merck Veterinary Manual. Lots of us have heard of the Merck Manual for people, but you may not know that there's one available for uh, veterinary medicine as well. So that's a nice handy resource and it also is freely available. Um, another one that I like to mention are the toll-free numbers from the National Library of Medicine. You may have somebody who comes into your library and says, uh, oh gee, I, I wonder if there's a local support group for diabetes or something like that. So this collects all those national toll-free numbers. Now, that may not provide you immediately with a local toll -free you know, local organization or a local support group, but usually you can uh, get to an 800 number from the national organization who will be able to provide that to you. So you can see in this example, I just typed in diabetes and one of the organization's names is the American Diabetes Association. And again, this information has been vetted, so they've checked out the organizations to make sure that they're not just 
uh, promoting something on a commercial basis. So we've got the phone number there. You can see there's an 800 number. Um, they have another number. And what I also like about this description is that it has this Espanol habla, uh, my Spanish isn't good, hablado, so it's a C. So it's even, it's even responding in the Spanish language. So it gives the little description as well in Spanish, and this could be helpful for um, patrons that you come in who are more comfortable in the Spanish language. This next one is one of my favorites. It's called the Drug Information Portal. Um, and there are drug resources in multiple different places. So you could go into Medline Plus. There are drug resources. Um, there's another one called Daily Med. There are resources there. But what this particular site does is aggregate all of that information into one place. So on the top panel there, you'll see where it says uh, there's a search box, and you would put in what it is that you're looking for, or if you wanted to search for a category, you could do that. Well, I happen to put in Lipitor because it's one of the most prescribed um, medications It's uh, for cholesterol uh, control. And here is just an example of what you'd see on the initial page. So you would see where the drug name is. It would give you its uh, what it's known as more generically. It gives you its search term. It gives you a descriptor. But what I really like is in the summary information here. So it says there's a summary of information in Medline Plus drug situation where I just mentioned that. If you happen to go to that website, it will give you um, what is it used for? What do I do if I take an overdose? What, uh, what if I miss a dose? Uh, so a lot of the things that you'd need to know as a patient if you were taking that medication. But you'll also notice if you look down a couple more that says summary of effect on breastfeeding. So if you went to that database, it would say, is this harmful for your baby? Should you take it? Should you not take it? Uh, and give you that information. And then there's another one underneath that that says liver tox. So that's a database that looks at drugs and how they affect your liver. You could find out more information there. Uh, then if you wanted to research uh, on PubMed Health, um, that's a database that's kind of like a cross between PubMed, if you've ever used that, which is our uh, index of journal articles, and Medline Plus. Medline PubMed Health gives us evidence-based medicine resources that we can go to. And uh, let's see, I think, oh, and the other one that I'd like to mention is the one called Daily Med. So if you've been a library that has um, always ordered the physician's desk reference, um, you could now uh, stop doing that if you wanted to and just refer your patrons to Daily Med. Uh, the Physician's Desk Reference and Daily Med are both resources that collect the information from the producers of the medications. So they contain all the same information that you might find in the box if you were going to get a prescription and you opened your box and it gives all the information about the drug that you may need to know. So that Daily Med will give you that information. The other thing that I like about Daily Med is that it will um, look at drug interactions. So, And the other part is it will also give you the opportunity to report drug interactions uh, if you happen to have some issues with that. So there's lots of drug resources there. Uh, Pillbox here, I think it's kind of a fun one. This has been in, in what we call beta for a number of years. We're not quite sure when it will ever be uh, out of the beta testing part of it, but I think it's because so many more medications are made by so many more manufacturers all the time. But for this, it might be a situation where maybe you're working with your mother or something who took her pills out of the real bottle and you know put them into a pill counter or something, and then you couldn't remember which pill was which. But what this allows you to do is select the shape, the color, if there's an imprint on the pill. And then what you can do is find uh, some choices of what that probably is. So again, um, I was using Lipitor for this particular uh, description. But you can see where there are different manufacturers who have put out the same drug. And once it comes out of the patent, that's a very common thing to happen but it would show you more than you could go into the drug labels and drug information links 
uh, for more of that. Uh, Marty, I have a, a. I noticed on that site, the pillbox one. I went to just so everyone knows. Um, I am capturing, grabbing all of these links that you're putting here as quickly as I can, and putting them into our delicious account, so they'll be available later for anyone to go to as well. Okay. But I noticed okay. when I went to that one before it just went into the site, it had a pop up that had a warning saying, "If this is an emergency, call 911." Oh, that's good. Which and it's, it's you know just don't don't you know if you're really having a problem and you're going to this site to find out you know what like you said what are the issues with this drug what should I worry about or whatnot and I, I thought that was very cool that before you could even get into it, it had a little pop up on top that said that uh, that's that a good that. idea yeah. and you know the other thing I would mention too is um, we also share this information with a poison control center so if you happen to have one of those in your area that's another good source for this kind of information. But good to, yeah. good to bring that in, Krista. Thanks. Um, you know, sometimes you may also get patrons who um, can't afford a medication. And many of the drug companies will work with these people uh, to provide them prescriptions uh, either at a low cost or no cost. Uh, so this is a page that sort of collects that information in one place. And again, you can see there are some different topic areas under Medline Plus. Um, there's the National Institutes of Health, uh, which also maintains its own hospital and has some additional resources. Um, the VA, the Veterans Administration, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Uh, but that one that I was talking about is the Pharmaceutical Assistance Program, which I think is uh, very interesting and really until I came into librarianship, didn't even know such a thing existed. Um, so this also has some ad additional information regarding uh, hospital and nursing care. So I think one of the interesting things that comes out of Medicare is you can go in and compare hospitals on, top, on how they are rated. So um, in the example that I've shown here, I've chosen a couple of, I've chosen three hospitals here in, within Omaha. And you can see it gives you what kind of hospital it is, whether it provides emergency services, um, whether they're able to receive lab results electronically, which may indicate you know, how far forward thinking they are, of course, uh, whether they're able to track patients' lab results. But this is just one tab. So if you look up at this other tab, you can say, you can look at a survey of patient experiences, uh, timely and effective care, uh, readmissions, and so on. So I think this is kind of a neat way to get a picture of different hospitals with which you're familiar, but you may not actually know how well they rate in these different categories. Another one that, that I'm providing on this page is from Medline Plus, and this is about nursing home care, uh, because again, I think one of the hard things that happens is when you may have aging parents that need assistance, you know, what kind of resources are available for you? and how can you help choose the right resources for them. So there are some uh, good things in terms of the overviews, the latest news, um, coping, specific conditions. You know, for example, if somebody has Alzheimer's, maybe they need a different kind of nursing care than someone else. But again, a whole lot of things there that um, are in far too much depth for me to go into, but I think provide a good place for you to jump off. The next one I want to mention is a lab test online. This is not a government resource, but it is a .org, so uh, it has, again, been reviewed. But this is a very complete way to look at a different kinds of tests and what happens in those tests. So this one happens to be about insulin, and you can see why you would get tested, uh, when you would get tested, what sort of... Um, sample is going to be required, whether it's a blood sample or a urine sample or whatever it is, and whether you need to have any test preparation. So if your doctor told you, uh, well, in a few weeks I'm going to put you through some tests, this would be one way for you to help alleviate any fears that you might have about that test in terms of providing that information beforehand. Uh, for number nine here, medical codes, these are all, of course, a part of our lives, and I'm sure we see these on our billing, but if you have questions on those, um, here is a place to go and find what those codes mean. I thought another thing that was interesting on this particular page is the new board screening coding and the terminology codes. So, again, it's sort of fascinating to find out all the different ways that your newborn may be 
evaluated when they're born. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration, this part is on assistive devices. So assistive devices, uh, we usually think about for people who are challenged, who may need some additional hearing help or vision help. Uh, but I found some interesting consumer products. And one of them that I found on this one, where you see this big eye, uh, this is a particular contact lens that is meant to make your eyes look like those of a vampire. So if you uh, have uh, somebody who wants to dress up for Halloween and they really want to go for the full effect, you could go in and find out more information on these particular contact lenses and whether they're safe for you or, or there's an issue. And I, I believe they are safe for you, but I thought that's an interesting thing for them to cover and uh, certainly something a little different than what I expected. There is, of course, on Medline Plus over on the right-hand side, uh, another good resource uh, on assistive devices. And you can see, again, how it's structured. Um, there are basics. There's learn more. There's multimedia tools. Or you can see different related topics uh, or things from the National Institutes of Health. And up there in the right-hand corner of that particular box, you can see there's a remote control. So that's a good example of an assistive device that maybe has bigger buttons. Uh, so if someone has trouble pushing them, or maybe the visuals on them are much larger than they would be on a normal remote control, uh, those are some of the things that you can get to and find out more information. So number 11 here is our medical or other uh, vital records. And I think this one is particularly interesting now because uh, we have so many more electronic records. Uh, so how will those be handled? Can you get a copy of them? Uh, who has your red medical records? So how do you find out that information? So this page says, do you know where your, and that would be medical records, are. So to find them, it may have to do with your health plan. Um, usually your doctor will have them, but what if your doctor retired? What happened to those records? So these give you some suggestions as to where to go and uh, what's required with regard to the state that you're in as well, uh, and where there are military records, and whether you might need birth, death, marriage, divorce certificates, and that type of thing as well. Uh, this one's on medical statistics, and I mentioned this one because um, many times with the National Library of Medicine and other organizations, you will see uh, grant applications, and when you are applying for grants, many times they're going to be asking you for statistics related to that particular grant. So this particular uh, chart, which I've provided you with the United States, this happens to be an older one. It comes out of 1993, but I don't think it's probably changed significantly. Which states are the grayest? I was trying to pick one that was uh, applicable here to Nebraska. So you can see that little swath that runs down the middle of the United States there uh, where people are living a little bit longer. So if that's your goal to live a little bit longer, you should choose one of those states, obviously. So. Um, there, again, are loads of statistics. Uh, the census is a particularly useful place to go. That's included here. Uh, but you'll see Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, as I mentioned, you'd see the Medline Plus health statistics. Um, so again, loads of information. It just is really how long you want to take to explore that. Uh, for our last one here uh, that I have in our numbered items, I've chosen the one that says Guide to Finding Health Information because there are loads of different places where people can go. So the first uh, call out box here, it says guess what happens when you call this number for Nebraska. So on this you will see the number 1-800-338-7657. But that number is good anywhere in the United States. However, when you call that number, you won't all end up at the same place. So for example, if you lived in Nebraska and you called that number and then you pushed the button for the Nebraska person, you would reach me. And we are located in six different states in our particular region. However, if you lived in, let's say, North Dakota, 
and you called that number, your call is actually being routed to an office in Chicago, which is where the National Network Libraries of Medicine office is for the 10 state area that uh, includes North Dakota. So even though the number goes different places, the number is the same for wherever you are. So, um, but you'll get a more regional resource than um, just, uh, you know, having one 1-800 number. The second thing here I want to mention here is your library could be listed on MedlinePlus.gov. So there's a place on MedlinePlus where you can uh, find a library. So if you have consumer health resources to share, you are welcome to put your information out there. Um, you have to just fill out a little uh, form, which gives your name and you know your app, the name of your library, your address, etc. And then you can be listed on Medline Plus. Uh, you become part of our system then of libraries that we work with, and we'll send you information, of course, from time to time to help keep you updated on information as well. Uh, the last call out box here is the one that I really want to remind people about. I think we as librarians have a real responsibility to teach people how to evaluate the resources. One of the most wonderful things is our access to internet and all that it provides, but it's also the most terrifying when you uh, see some of the results when you type in a condition and you're going to a Google search box. Um, and you don't know which things are good to look at and which things are not good to look at. So by teaching our patrons to evaluate the information, we can help make them uh, more uh, educated about what things are good and which things are not. I, I often think, you know, .govs are fairly reliable, uh, as are the .orgs. I think when you have the .coms, you might want to just raise a little red flag because those are typically commercial websites. That doesn't mean they're bad, but it does mean they'll probably be providing advertising. And uh, it is interesting to me even now when I go out and do a search on something and then I go into a .com and I can see how uh, websites have picked up that information where I've been before and then are relating topics on the side of things that uh, they think I might be interested in now or products that I might wish to buy. So just be aware that those kinds of things can happen when you go to those other sites. Okay, let's move on. I do have a couple of other things because I'm sure you wanted just a little bit more. We're not quite at our hour anyway, but I did want to mention some reminders, particularly for public libraries. So the first one is Medline Plus. Of course, you can always go to that. We have all this information that's listed here in the red side. And I'm going to mention just a couple of things that are available from this front page if you happen to go out to it. So first off is the Medline Plus magazine. And that's at the lower right of the front page. If you're not already getting this magazine, I would urge you to order it for your library. You can order more than one copy. So if you've got a couple of branches or something, order as many as you want for your branches. Um, and all it requires is just filling out this form that's located on the right side of the slide. So your name, your street address, your state, et cetera, those are the main things. And then you can receive a copy of this. It comes out quarterly um, and usually has a, a particular feature. So this one has to be, has, happens to be about osteoporosis. It was Chloris Leachman. And it will pick a topic and then associate it with a celebrity who has an interest or maybe has this issue. Uh, and then gives you information, of course, inside. So we promote that as we can. You might also be interested in this handout. You could make these handouts and just have them at your front desk. So when somebody comes looking for medical information, you can direct them to Medline Plus, which you know is going to be credible and reliable. So this is a little trifold. You could print it out in color or in black and white, or you can print it out in Spanish or English. So um, again, our link down there is for our training resources. Um, another handout that's been particularly popular of late is one on mobile resources. So you can see here that I've circled one side of this mobile resources handout is for websites. The other side is for apps. Um, but these are all resources that come from the National Library of Medicine. 
uh, that can help get you to things on a quick basis. So you'll see, for example, on that website, you'll see Daily Med and Medline Plus and PubMed. And one of the real goals of the National Library of Medicine is optimizing now our websites so that they can be viewed on a smartphone. Uh, because we know that probably about 95% of people in the next several years will be using this as their primary computer. Uh, and as we all get more used to that, we've got to be able to look at websites on that as well. And over on the right-hand side, then, there are apps uh, such as the AIDS, uh, I, AIDS uh, HIV and AIDS Glossary uh, Embryo, which will show you the growing stages of a baby. Uh, health hotlines we mentioned before, as well as LACMED for checking drug resources for breastfeeding. Uh, but again, some nice things to be able to go to that you can have uh, quickly at your fingertips. Here's another handout. If you're working with teachers or if you're working in school, this is a great one to give them, which gives them resources that are good for biology, chemistry, forensic science, uh, a whole host of things, as well as career information. And lastly here, uh, well not quite, almost, uh, our outreach activities and resources. This is if you want to order promotional materials or be able to print them out. These all come from the National Library of Medicine. So you'll see where there's a section here that says posters and flyers about halfway down there, uh, which you can print out. You'll see PowerPoint presentations. So if you want to give a presentation, you can use those as well. Uh, so there are loads of different topics there that you can look at for those promotional materials. And here in our own six-state region, which includes Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming, um, if you want to order promotional materials that come specifically from the National Library of Medicine, we give you a little picture here, and you can order up to 50 of something. So if you were having a health fair or something, you might want 50 copies of the Consumer Health Card, which gives you several different websites to go to for consumer health. But you can take a look at that website and see if there's something of interest there for you. And uh, lastly, I just want to mention um, that at the McGugan Library of Medicine, because I've always been based here, uh, they permitted me to put up a LibGuide of National Library of Medicine resources. So some of the websites that I have mentioned today are also on this page. So you could go just to this page and then each one of these things is linked. So you wouldn't have to type in uh, the uh, URL. You could just click on it and it would take you to that link. Now I'm still listed as the contact person for the National Network Libraries of Medicine. As I mentioned, I've recently changed positions, but um, I'm going to keep my name and face up there for the time being until our new person is on board. Uh, so if you have questions, you can contact me. Uh, my phone number is there. And you can also call that 800 number. That is still being routed to me as well. Uh, so that uh, concludes most of what I wanted to cover, and I am certainly open for any questions. Okay, great. Uh, thanks very much, Marty. Um, yes, if anyone does have any questions, do use the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Please type in there, um, and I will grab them from there. Um, if you have a microphone, please just let me know that you have a microphone and you want to have us unmute you, and you can ask your question that way. Um, before we do go on to the questions, Marty, you would have wanted to get a um, zip code Information? Can you yes, if you wouldn't mind uh, putting your zip code in your question box, I would very much appreciate that. We um, like to collect the statistics of where we are reaching people. So if you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. Yep, so we'll just collect those zips and just pass on just that on to Marty for you so that uh, she can uh, have that info for them. All right, Absolutely. yep, looks like we've got a whole bunch of them coming in. Great, thanks a lot, guys. Okay. All right, we do have one uh, person who says they have a question in a microphone. Hold on a sec here. Okay, great. Michael, you're unmuted. Hey, good morning, Marty. Hi, Michael. Um, you, one of the resources you pointed to early was on drug interactions, and you right. mentioned that you can self-report interactions. Right. What, what sort of quality control do they have over those reports? I, I, I'm just 
picturing a whole bunch of people getting on and saying, I, you know, my kid reacted to the MMR with autism and things like that. <laughs> what, how how, how uh, do you know, that information? Not, I would say it's not that so much as drug interaction. So sure. if I took this drug and I took a second drug and then I had an interaction, that's the kind of information they're looking for. Right, so, but, I, but, but you're kind of self-reporting and, and whether or not that was an actual but what they're they're, when they when you turn that information in, everybody else isn't seeing it. It's ah, just okay. going to that um, the people that run that database, and so then they'll look at it, and then if it's worth investigation, then they'll do that. Oh, okay, great. So, so it's not just becoming public. <laughs> no, no, it's not just okay. becoming public. I mean, some of you may have heard, for example, there are certain medications, and I can't think of them off the top of my head but that you shouldn't eat them or you shouldn't take them and drink grapefruit juice. Mm -hmm. Antibiotics, so, for example, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. So it's that sort of thing that they will then investigate should they have issues. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, you are welcome. Yes, I could see that could be a great free-for-all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise. All right, so does anybody have any other questions? We've got a whole bunch of zip codes coming in, so that's great. Um, but does anybody have any questions about any of the resources? Um, as I said, I think I grabbed every website you did mention, but I probably missed some. I'll go back and get them from your slides. Oh, or. <laughs> well, had I known you were going to do that, I could have done it for oh, you, that's, Krista. <laughs> not a problem. We always add these into our, go, our uh, delicious account here at the commission that we have okay. just to capture anything from great. any of our shows that people do. So. That's a wonderful resource. Um, yeah, and then now you said the slides, you have a place where they'll be available, or are you going to send them to I me? We can do already, okay. Yes, on that LibGuides page, oh, okay. I've already posted them. So if you <laughs> scroll down on that uh, LibGuide page, you should be able to find them there. But if you have any difficulty, I'm happy oh, yep, to send them to you. Yep, I just, I'll show that here. Yeah, I've got that on my screen because I just added your link to our. Um, okay. Great, yes, we will link to that then as well. Okay, great. Doesn't look like anybody's okay. typing in any questions. Wait, one more question. All right, hang on a sec. Okay. All right, go ahead. You're unmuted. Yeah, it's Michael again. <laughs> yeah. uh, the magazine that libraries can subscribe to, just, yeah. just to clarify, was that like you want the library to get a copy or can they get multiples to distribute? Um, how do I want to say this? If anybody can get multiple, they can get multiple copies if they want to. But I wouldn't encourage them to, you know, get 100 copies or something. You know, if they have five copies for branches or something, that's okay. But I think if you were going into big numbers, they might uh, be a little concerned about that. It is, however, also available online. So if you ever want to look at it that way, too. And I don't think I mentioned this, but it also has a Spanish version. So the Spanish version usually focuses on a different issue and a different celebrity, and it comes out twice a year. But that might also be something that people are interested in. Okay, so, thanks. It, and I had a question, but I don't know if you said this at the time or I missed it. Um, is that just for institutions to subscribe to it, or is that something that an individual could? Like, I think I as an individual, I think you can. You know, if they turn you down, I don't. I've never heard of anyone being turned down. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking, like, but for some, yeah, like, if you were interested in doing that, you could do. Yeah, that. like send it to my mom or something like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, try it and let me know if it works. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, we do have a comment, though. Someone says, thanks for the information about the magazines. Our materials department will be delighted to know about this free resource. And I'm okay, sure that's good. definitely true. Library, uh, you hear about it way too much. Uh, per periodical subscriptions going sky high costs, and uh, yeah. anything that they can get that would not be that and just needs the space on the shelf. Um, I think right. it's great. And yeah, it's not a, a big, uh, you know, it's not a big magazine. You know, it's uh, let's say 20 pages or something, but uh, it usually has a good appearance. And it, it does. Makes people good, think about yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. looks good. Yeah. So does anybody have any other questions? Nothing has come in yet while we've been chatting. If you do, type it in there. Do you have any of it? Well, I'm waiting to see if we do get any. Do you have any other last words of wisdom for us, Marty? <laughs> well, I, I would just say never be afraid to explore it. You know, if you look at the first page, it has the National Library of Medicine website on it, but you can Google from the National Library of Medicine. So if you ever forget where any of these resources are, you can always go there. And, um, and also in Nebraska, you know, one of the other things I didn't mention, and because I work here now at the McGugan Library of Medicine, 
If you're located here and uh, you have a question, reference librarians in the state of Nebraska can help you. Mm -hmm. So we provide a little packet of information for free that can go out to residents of Nebraska, which is a really nice service. And I, I wouldn't overlook that if you work, if, if you live other places, uh, know that you can contact a medical library, particularly an academic medical library, and many times they'll be willing to help you, particularly if you're there in person. Mm -hmm. But I know, for example, at our library, you can use any of our databases if you come into the library. Oh, nice. Okay. So we have a wealth of resources. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on these, of course, and most uh, academic, particularly state-associated, universities are much the same because you pay tax dollars and you have a right to access those materials as well. So don't forget there are lots of different ways <clears throat> to get good information. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question. Is there a directory who someone should contact if they're not in our region? Do you mean in, in uh, the uh, National Network Libraries of Medicine's directory? A directory of people? Like, like or... people in other areas, not in Nebraska. So you mean if you were trying to find medical information? I guess I'm, I'm confused about the question. So if, you, if okay. you wanted to contact the National Network Libraries of Medicine, wherever you're located, you could just call that 800 number, or you could go to nnlm.gov. And that website is for the National Network Libraries of Medicine. Yeah, that's what they were looking for. Yeah, because you, we've got our yeah. mid-continental region, region. What? How do they get right. if they're not in that area? Yeah. yeah. So if you just go to nnlm.gov, you'll see a picture of the United States. And whichever area of the United States, whichever region you're located in, they're, they're colored mm -hmm. differently. Yeah. So, for example, we're the purple region. Um, so if you're located in California and it's a different color, you'll just, you know, click on California, and then it will take you to the, the regional site for the National Network Libraries of Medicine in your particular um, multi-state area. Yeah, looking at the map here, which I've just added to the links, and I'll show you guys, it's, um, yep, that's exactly what they're looking for. There's eight different regions in the country, so yeah, you'd figure out which region yeah. you're located in. Right. Right. You just click on it, it'll automatically take you to their website. Cool. And, and again, I should mention that they, there are webinars all the time. I know with our region, we do at least two webinars every month, and one of those is going to be in-depth on one of the National Library of Medicine resources. Mm -hmm. But all of the regions do those kinds of webinars, and they're open to anyone. So even though I'm in Nebraska, I often attend things, let's say, in the Northeast uh, National Network Library uh, area. Uh, so yeah, if they're doing a topic that's of interest to you, then yeah. So it's just right. any any region is free and open to anyone to really attend if they want Absolutely. to. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. So I've seen sometimes, and I've sometimes for certain of the topics I've grabbed you to also repeat some of the stuff on Agapas Live for us. Um, that you sometimes have shared the, those things are coming up through our system mailing list or through uh, Nebraska Library Association info or something. Sometimes sometimes oh, I've sure. seen stuff pop up in my email from you saying this session's coming up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We try and promote them when we remember to do so. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard, yes, promotion. Is. Well, because we all get so much of that, you know, we try not to overdo it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I do have, um, so you're, you said your position has changed, so you're not at the National Network Libraries of Medicine. Is someone else coming, going to be in charge there? You know, or the position like? is open right now, oh, okay. and we're beginning the process of looking for someone. Okay, so there will eventually be somebody who's in charge. Yes, absolutely. Okay. They're not just yeah. leaving it or something. <laughs> no, 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 there will be a person there. So if you're looking for a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, and you have a master's degree in library science. And I will add, it doesn't require that you have a medical background. I didn't have a medical mm -hmm. background, so hmm. uh, don't necessarily eliminate yourself if that's something you think you're interested in. A lot of it has to do with outreach and, of course, presentations like these. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get to do a lot of fun things. So. Great. Okay. All right. Well, it doesn't look like if any other questions have come in. Anybody have anything desperate last qu question that they need? We just have a comment that is great to have this resources, these magazine coming out because it's hard to keep up with medicine since for books about every five years or less you've got to update your books constantly and it's great to have some of this Absolutely. online um, information. 
I know. Yeah, oh, and I've, I've heard that medical information itself doubles. I've seen statistics that say seven years and five years and 18 months. Oh, yeah. So I always say if you think your doctor graduated from college in, let's say, 1980, just think how much more exponential information there is out there and how much more we each need to be responsible for researching information that's reliable and good so we can help understand our own health mm -hmm. issues. Be informed before you, yeah, as much as you can. And you can now because there is so much out there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, another comment, just thanks Marty, great content. I didn't know that Daily Med had the same info as the PDR, which is great, yeah. I will pass this on to colleagues. That yeah. can save you $100 Oh, a yeah. Year. If you're talking about books like that previous, like you did previously, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. All right, it doesn't look like we're getting any more questions coming in. That's fine. Thank you very much, Marty. This is great. I'm glad we were able to get you on the show um, again. Absolutely. I'm um, to get this info out there to everyone. Um, okay. I'm going to pull back my presenter control to my screen now. So you'll Super. see. So you're okay. not on the web any, on the line any, on, All anymore, right. <laughs> um, but you are still with us. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And this is um, okay. I went down to our midcon region. This is the website that you're talking about, Marty. The um, right, the exactly. map there. Yeah. So you can see yeah. whichever region you're in. Um, here's yeah. us, Midcontinent, and that pops us right to our specific info and sure the states yeah. that we're covering. Um, and I did in, as I said, in our and there's the. Live guides of yours, and right. right over here, scroll down is where yeah the presentation is. So, right. yeah, the slides will be there. Yes, but you're welcome to use any of those resources, mm -hmm. of course, as yeah. well. And we've I've added, as I said, as many links as I can. I'm going to go through. I think at the beginning I was still catching up and getting the show going, and I missed some, so I'm going to go in and grab anything I missed and get it into our delicious account here, um, as we do every week, and that will be made available on our web our. Um, the Encompass Live website um, after the okay. show. So thank you very much, Marty. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. That will wrap it up for this week's show, 13 Things You Might Not Know About National Library of Medicine Resources. Uh, the show is being recorded and will be onto our website, as you can see right here. Right here beneath our upcoming shows is where all of our archives go. So we pop in our recordings, presentations, and any links will all be on here so you'll be able to access them um, afterwards. So I uh, hope you join us next week when our topic is getting more money from your book sales or is this old book valuable? Um, another session that I pulled from our state conference from last fall, uh, Cecilia Lawrence is the director of our North Platte Public Library out in the middle of the state here in Nebraska. And she did a great session about um, how to figure out what books you can sell, what would go to your book sales, what you might sell somewhere else um, in other areas to get some extra cash flow for your library. So definitely sign up for that and any other other of our upcoming sessions that you see here on our schedule. Also, if you are a Facebook user, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so you can pop right over to our Facebook page if you like. And once it gets loaded, there we go, <laughs> like us there. Um, I post reminders of new sessions here. I always do a reminder every Wednesday morning. People can log in on the fly, as I know some of you did today. Um, and our recordings are available. I let people know when those are ready, so definitely do um, like us on Facebook if you are um, a big Facebook user. Other than that, thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you uh, next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.